A couple of months ago, I did this project for a client and I thought that it would be cool to show you the process behind it. So with this episode, I want to introduce a new format on the channel, which is client process story time or something. I don't really have a name for it, but that's fine for now. So let's just get into it. So this project started by my client having a website like this. She is a photographer and she makes portraits of uh, people and especially children. So this was her homepage, really simple, just a logo, menu, photo and a footer. And then there were many other pages like this, super simple as you can see, a booking system which was an embed to another system, uh, a contact page was, which was also really simple, a portfolio like this and a, a pricing page. Uh, this website, by the way, is Dutch because I am Dutch and this client is Dutch. So I will try to translate uh, as we go forward in this video. But when this client approached me, uh, it was a few months after the fire and I was really busy, but I personally know her and I wanted to help her. So I was like, you know what? Let's just make a great deal here. I'm gonna redesign your whole website, but then I wanna use that design, make a variation of it and make a tutorial about it. So that is what this project is about, which you may have seen in some videos already on the channel, which I'm gonna make Adobe XD and Elementor videos about once the container is out. So that's why I offered her and she said yes. So then I started with the project. So now let's dive into the design process because there are some interesting things here. So the first step that I'm always gonna do when I design a project is I'm gonna think about the experience of the website. What is the website trying to achieve and is their current website actually doing that? What is good and what is not good about it? But as you can see, her current website had a lot of pages and people need to click on every individual page. But these days, people don't like to click anymore. And the reason for this is that if you let users click on something, they have to make a decision. And that's why I think these days the pages are longer than they were in the past. So my idea was to combine everything on the website into a one pager and then have pages with more information behind it. So if people then wanted more information, then they could decide what to click on with uh, buttons like more info. So here you can see a few versions of the homepage. I was trying to build all of the sections and I ended up with this design over here. So here are her services. Here's a little story. Her portfolio is right here, an about story. And all of these separate buttons then link to pages which contain more information. Her pricing, which is Tariven and reviews, which was not on the old website, but this is something she really wanted. And then a call to action to make an appointment. So let's say that people wanted more information about her. They could click on this button and then they would go to the about page, which contained more information. And of course in Elementor, I'm gonna make it so that the client can add whatever they want here. And another key was is that the client wanted the eyes of the portraits to be very prominent in the website. And in order to do that, I included a lot of photos where you could really see the eyes. And I also made a lot of things bigger. For example, here you can see a four column grid and in the original design, it was six. And also even the surfaces have photos with the eyes instead of just being blocks with text or icons. And another key part is that the background, the main background is now black. And therefore all of the photos will pop a little bit more, which is of course what you want with a photography website. So as you can see on the old website, this color, it's a nice color, this light brown color, but it takes up too much attention. So by stretching up the photo to the full width of the website and by deleting this color, you get drawn in to the photo even more. And when I arrived in Elementor, I also made sure that the animations had a little delay. So you first see the eyes on the website when you reload and then the text comes in. So first the eyes and then the text. And on the old website, as you can see right here, it was just, there were no animations. So now it's just a really eyes prominent experience, which is really cool. And to create even more focus on the images and to make it clean, I hit the uh, menu under this button over here and I've used a pop-up in Elementor to make this work. And therefore less things are competing for the attention over here. So those are a few things that I did to make the images come alive. 
This client also wanted to make sure that she didn't Photoshop the faces of the children. And this is probably something in the photography scene that when you make portraits that uh, photographers afterwards, they change the, the shape of your, of your face to make you uh, look better. But she was really clear and she wanted to show that she doesn't do that. So that's why I decided to go with a slider so you can see the changes and you can see that there are no changes in the actual face. The only thing that she edits are the eyes. And of course, it's really cool to just see a before and after. Uh, and it also proves that she doesn't just take photos, but she also puts in a lot of effort in her uh, editing. And this whole section was something that I proposed because I always think that it's really important for every website to sell the why. Why should you work with this photographer, right? Does she just click on the buttons and has some nice lights? Like, no, she actually has something that makes her special. So I wanted that to come out and I'm always trying to look within my clients for that special why and implement it somewhere on the website because it just creates so much identity and it also helps the client, of course, to sell more services. Another thing to keep it clean is that I tried to hide this because she used another system for booking, which was not part of the website. It's some embed from another system uh, from another website, but it's, it's kind of ugly as you can see. But of course, make a booking is really important for the website. So what I did on the new website, if you scroll down, is I just uh, added this button in the footer of every page. In my design file, this is how it looked, but she decided to change the photo. But if you click on the button, now you can see the booking system, which of course, it doesn't have a very nice design. So sometimes when your client is working with a system and it's kind of ugly, just hide it on a page, just use buttons and hide it somewhere. And, and since it's in every footer, people will find it anyway. It's in the menu as well. You can click here on Sessi Booken, that means a book a session, and then people can book it over here. Her old website also didn't contain any reviews, as you can see. So that is something that she wanted to add. So I created this section, as you can see right here, with a photo, a star rating, a name, and a piece of text. And again, a button to a page that shows all of the reviews. So that was kind of the design process. I didn't actually make a mobile version right here because for me, it was pretty clear how the mobile version was going to look. I only create a mobile and a tablet version when I am not so sure that how the sections would uh, be responsive. But for this design, it was very clear. Everything was in clear columns. So I just saw the mobile version already in my mind and that's why I didn't do it. So now we can talk about the techniques and the developments. And I already said one thing in the design phase and that is that I used the pop-up feature in Elementor to create a menu. I actually haven't created a tutorial on this yet, but you can use the pop-up if you put it on full screen and just add a nav menu widget into it to create a full screen menu and then just use the X over here to go back, which is kind of like a hack to create a full screen menu because uh, with Elementor we don't have mega menu use yet so this is something that a lot of people do in order to have a full screen menu like this and some other things because the slider for example is also not part of elementor so i used uh, jet elements for this so if you don't know i have made a video about croco block i'm a big fan of croco block uh, which is a set of plugins, which uh, is kind of like uh, Elementor Pro on steroids. I will link that video in the card and in the description. If you have never heard of it, I know a lot of you guys also have it and love it. So for the slider, I used Jet Elements, which just gives you a lot of uh, widgets. And I'm going to talk a lot about Croco Block in this video because I used it a lot. So if you want to get Croco Block for yourself, go to livingonpixels.com slash links, scroll down, and there is a coupon code over here to get 10% discount. If you click on this link, then the coupon code works. So don't just go to the normal website if you're interested. And I'm also uh, put that tutorial in the description. And by the way, these are affiliate links. I make a commission of it, but that is the reason why I'm able to create all of these free videos. So that's the kind of deal that we have, right? I make free videos. You sometimes use the affiliate links. You don't pay more, you even pay less. Okay, let's get back. Um, the portfolio over here, we used, uh, here we used the normal gallery, but as you can see, we have the options over here and that is option pages. Option pages is also part of Croco Block. I think it's part of Jet Engine. By the way, all of the uh, products of uh, Croco Block start with Jet, which is a bit confusing because the company is called Croco Block, but they start with Jet. And 
Jet Engine is the plugin I use the most because you get a lot of dynamic features. And one of them is option pages, as you can see right here in this visual. And option pages allows you to create a page like this. Uh, you can put in any data field you want, but here the client can easily uh, delete, edit, uh, or add new photos, and then you can load in these images on the website wherever you want. So that is a safe way for your clients to edit the photos, but it's also nice because you can load in the data from anywhere. Um, and here I'd use the normal gallery, but if you go to the, the portfolio page, uh, I used jet tabs over here. And then within those tabs, you can import a template, as you can see. Uh, you can just put in text, but you can also use a template. And then within that template, there is the normal gallery widget again. And I guess I know that Elementor also has a tabs feature, uh, but I think that I've used the Jet Engine because on the homepage, I wanted to link to a specific tab. And I don't think that that was possible with Elementor. I don't remember exactly. But for example, if you click over here, you, you go to a specific tab within uh, uh, all of the tabs. And I think that's why I use CrocoBlock. I'm not so sure. And in the end of the day, it doesn't really matter if you already have CrocoBlock, why not use their widgets? Of course, you could say like using the Elementor Pro widgets is always better because less plugins is better. And I agree, but I think there was a reason here why I used it. I'm sorry, I forgot it. The next one is the parallax effect. So if you go to the homepage and you scroll very slowly, you first see that this text scrolls a little bit faster than the background. Small detail, but nice. And then if you scroll to the bottom, you can see that this camera that she's holding in her hand is scrolling a bit slower and therefore it looks like she is actually lowering or raising her her camera so she's taking a photo of you right uh, so that's a small thing that i did with the jet elements as well the reviews over here are done with jet engine because with jet engine over here you can create a custom post type testimonials and then within testimonials, you can create posts. And then with Jet Engine, you can create custom fields here in meta boxes, which are these fields. And then you can use the data in these fields to create a listing like this. This is pretty advanced, by the way. If you don't know how to do this, I have a tutorial on the listing widget, which I will also link in the description. But this is not possible with just Elementor Pro. They're working on the loop builders. So I guess that in the future, this will be possible with Elementor Pro custom post types and custom fields, advanced custom fields. But for now, you have to use uh, CrocoBlock uh, or you could use another plugin like Elementor Custom Skin. I all explained that, by the way, in my CrocoBlock video. But I think that I'm getting a little bit too advanced now. Or do you guys like this more in-depth uh, development uh, explanation? Let me know. So let me know just in general if you liked this video, was some part too in-depth or not. But in the end, this client was really happy with the design and that of course makes me happy as well. And it's always nice to work for people you know because the feeling of making somebody happy that you know is just much better and the passion is why i think you should do this not just to make money of course it's nice you can make a lot of money with websites but but there's also so much passion in it right i think i think there should be especially in the design so let me know if you like this new format and then i want to thank you for watching and hopefully i will see you in another video on living with pixels